What was the most epic comeuppance you've ever seen a spoiled kid get? I guess the situation is epic to me, because it seems like spoiled kids always win. I took my kids to a children's museum when they were toddlers. There was a specific area for toddlers with a whole grocery store set up. Such is life. There was a 8 or 9 year old kid in the toddler area being a pain in the butt. He kept taking all of the kids toys, hoarding all the shopping carts. He would hand out a few pieces of food to the kids but mainly wouldn't let them touch or play with anything else. Now, normally I would let my own badass kid deal with the situation. He doesn't take crap from anybody, but they started getting into it when this kid got on my son's nerves, and then the older kid hit my son. Done. I went over to the kid, got right up in his face and said, No, we do not hit. Get out instant tears. Dropped all the toys and left the play area. His mom caught the tail end of the scene, and tore him a new one. What is wrong with you? I can't turn around for 2 minutes, and then some other parent has to come in and tell you to behave unfortunately too little too late for that one. Nice that she backed you up, though. Many parents in my area go mental if you attempt to stop their snot-nosed brats turning into criminal adults. Ooh I've got a fun one. This one. I handled myself. I waited tables in a breakfast diner a few years back. Two ladies come in and tow one of their kids along. A chubby boy with gold chains and a nice watch. Kid is probably 10-11. For reference. Mom is clearly very tired of dealing with him as he is very demanding. Blurts out what he wants before I can say hi, etc. Partway through the meal, he holds up his sprite cup and shakes it at me, and utters only the word more. Mom looks aghast and chastises him for being rude, to which he begrudgingly apologizes. I shrugged and told him don't apologize to me, apologize to your mom. Was a little worried when I came back around with his sprite and saw his salty, hot airs streaming down his chubby face. Mom left me a 10 on a $30 bill, however, so I think she was happy with my service, D. This was the best response you could have given. I played football in the local kids league. One kid from another team was basically untouchable as his dad was a major sponsor of the league and would donate money for uniforms, drinks etc. His son was a pretty good receiver, but didn't like getting hit, and his parents made a big deal of leaving their son alone so he can develop his skills. He was insufferable. Anytime he scored a TD, he would do over the top celebrations and mock all the other players, his teammates included. Then came high school. Most of the kids from the league ended up in one of two schools. He went to mine, and some other players. During tryouts, he did well. The coaches were mostly focused on skills and minimal contacts during the first few rounds of cuts. The final round was when things got interesting. Full contact was permitted and he got rocked over and over again. No one was actually trying to tackle any harder than normal, it's just this dude didn't know what to do when he got tackled. So he screamed and cried a lot. He didn't make the team. Until his dad came down to the school and offered to donate money for uniforms and some other goodies for our sports teams. So he made the team and again we were told to take it easy on him a bit. So we did. But the other teams didn't. And he went up against some of the players he mocked previously. And they remembered. Our QB kept passing to him. And he was getting repeatedly smashed. Over and over again. It was the only time our team cheered for the other team. He quit playing football after that. Actual school of hard knocks. I went on a bush walk in Singapore and there are pretty clear signs around not to feed the monkeys as they can get aggressive. Anyway there were these two boys around the age of 8 swearing and throwing sticks and rocks at a little monkey in a tree. The dad was standing there laughing and allowing this to go on. I was about to say something when one of the kids ripped open a bag of skittles and started throwing them. The monkey immediately ran down from the branch and snatched the skittles. At the same moment another three monkeys came out of nowhere, and in an epic display of monkey justice, swarmed the kids, making them and the dad run away for dear life. Never mess with monkeys. I used to work at a women's shelter. Christmas time rolls around and a man and his sourpuss teenage son comes to the door. He says his son would like to donate some items to the kids staying at the shelter. Great. The man and his son start hauling in some expensive items. There was an Xbox, a bunch of games, a flat screen, iPad, cool headset, etc. Turns out the kid ran his mouth and the dad made him give everything to the kids. 
Christmas was pretty cool for our gang that year. Well I think I actually know this kid and his dad, because I heard the other side of this story which was son texted a friend telling them how crappy his parents were for not being able to buy him the Xbox he wanted. His parents had already bought the Xbox but then dad saw the texts and decided kid didn't deserve the gift so I wonder if we're talking about the same people. When I was 12 my dad dated a nice lady with a bratty 9 year old who would talk back to and refuse to do chores which would then be passed to me. One day at the dinner table everyone is eating and he goes listen and rips a tiny fart. But his mom is embarrassed and asks him to stop or go to the bathroom. Instead he spreads a crap eating grin and leans in to rip one loose and accidentally shoots himself mid dinner. His expression of horror was the best thing ever. I died laughing as he ran clutching his butt away from the table. The reason why he continually talked back and didn't do his chores is because he knew that would just be hoisted onto you. I don't blame your dad for that but I 100% blame that kid's mom. I worked as an outdoor camp instructor. One week I was on logistics and had to drive the van to lick up kids. I had heard from my friend that one of the kids in his group was a little crap. Back chatting. Lazy. Bullying other kids. When I got to the pickup point, the kids hopped into the van and my mate and shotgun. My mate Mitch gave me the rundown of the kid. As I started the van up I did a visual check of seat belts and everyone was good. Except for the kid. I asked, he said no. I told him I can't leave until he puts it on. So he did and I started to leave. A minute down the road I heard him unclip his seat belt again so I had to stop the van and ask him again. He put it back on. This happened one more time. On the third time I just pulled over, turned the van off, radioed bass and asked for my manager and the overseeing teacher who was his dean to come up and pick this kid up because he was a danger to the others in the van. That's when this kid started pleading and begging. Told him no. I already made the call. He got sent home. My mate Mitch had one of his best weeks after this kid left. One time I wouldn't give my daughter a push on the swing because she was whining instead of asking. She knows we don't listen to whining but her grandpa was there so she was testing me. When she figured out I really wasn't going to do it, she grabbed the rope from the swing and flung the swing at me. It missed me. Came back and smacked her right in the face. I'm sure it hurt too because it was a board with a rope through the middle. Not that I'm happy that my kid was hurt over it but I taught her about karma that day. She also learned about the laws of motion. Equal and opposite reactions. I think I was around 9 or so and I made friends with another kid down the road. Was his grandparents place and he visited a lot. If I remember correctly we met through baseball. He was incredibly overweight and bossy. He always made the rules of the games we played and would throw major tantrums if I objected. For instance while playing with action figures. I had the toy do some cool flips. He went crazy saying how it needed to be realistic. The first time I visited his house I was blown away by the volume of toys he had. Growing up fairly poor I was accustomed to having maybe one cool toy. He had all the PlayStation games and a huge collection of anime VHS. Not surprising. His parents were overweight as well and would make dense butt dinners that would take me two days to recover from. Eventually one sleepover he wanted to play wrestle. Didn't take but a second to know how bad of an idea that is. Him being 100 lbs plus. Especially since he wanted us to be shirtless. I refused and he cried telling me to take my shirt off and to wrestle. I remember walking out and asking his mom for a ride home. She just gave me the look of I understand. Two days later he shows up at my house asking for me to come out. My brother told him I wasn't home as I walk by the kitchen. He flipped his crap and that's the last I heard of him. I didn't know you were friends with Eric Cartman. On the first day of a two week vacation, I saw my spoiled 10 year old cousin tell his mother, his older female cousin, his aunt and his grandmother that he wasn't going to clear his place or rinse his dishes because that's women's work. For the rest of that two week vacation, nobody had to lift a finger to clear a plate, rinse a dish or wash a pot because it was his job. At times there were over a dozen of us there. LOL. Perfect punishment. I guess I'll start. Definitely not the best, but it still pleased me. I used to work at a pony camp that catered to rich kids from a very nice neighborhood. We would have really spoiled kids all the time. While annoying, 
the most frustrating part is trying to maintain authority just so the little shoots don't get themselves killed by 1000 pounds animals. Anyways, we had a maybe 10 years old kid from some mildly famous sportscaster one week. Kid was just downright awful. She ignored everything we told her and was mean to the other kids in camp. At one point she started a physical fight with another girl and when she felt like she was getting beaten she started yelling do you know who my mom is? I'm going to tell her the other kid got scared and started crying. My co-worker replied actually, I do know your mom and I know she wouldn't like to hear about this. Why don't I call her right now little brat didn't believe her so my co-worker did. She was much easier to deal with the rest of the week. Turns out, my co-worker worked with her mom many times over the years. She's a professional makeup artist for TV and did her makeup more than a few times. Suck it spoiled brat. If someone said do you know who my parent is I would punch them again regardless. Used to work at a non-overnight summer camp and after school program and week long soccer camp. The town isn't huge so needless to say over a few years I got to know several kids from different programs. One 10 years old boy I knew from after school care was a total prick. Bully. Snob. Didn't think he had to listen. Tattletale personal pet peeve. Just awful. He came to my soccer camp and proceeded to make fun of her 8 yo girl cause she had old cleats where he had the newest Nikes and a brand new cool design ball. Unfortunately for him I also knew this 8 yo girl and knew that the reason her cleats looked old and worn down is that she was a motherfucking beast. Just all around amazing athlete who loved soccer and played hours every day. I paired him with her for a simple drill where one person started with ball and you just tried to get past the other person and kick the ball at stationary ball cone about 10 ids away to simulate passing scoring accurately while under pressure. He was of course angry saying she was too young and a girl. I said if he hit the cone 3 times he could pick his partner. He again pointed out her shoes to me as if that were going to change my mind before jiving in and playing. She proceeded to humiliate him over the next few mins. Not once letting him dribble past her in 5 attempts. He was livid. Bending down messing with laces as if the shoes really mattered then saying he needed to use his ball. Nothing worked. He was so angry I thought he was going to be violent but then it was her turn to be on a fence. He talked some kind of smack I forget what and refused to let her use his ball. She didn't say a word got s new ball. I blew whistle and she did a step over fake which made him move to the side she stood back up straight and kicked it between his legs and hit the cone. She barely even moved. He was so freaking angry. Second round he charged her screaming. She kept her cool, wound back like she was gonna drill it at his dumb face. He ducked and squealed as she dribbled around him with his hands still covering his head and hit the cone. I didn't make her embarrass him for the remaining 3 attempts and called a water break. The kid was just dumbfounded. He honestly thought his shoes were going to make him better without any effort. He was better behaved the rest of the week but honestly I think she just broke his spirit. He just seemed out of it. Hope he's doing alright. The girl is like an all-American HS soccer player last I checked. Won't be surprised if I see her in Olympics one day. Your boss for doing that. 10 stroke 10 coaching. Not incredibly epic and not much of a comeuppance, but great nonetheless. I was on a flight from Washington Dulles to Heathrow. This 6 8 year old kid behind me was screaming the whole overnight flight. Constantly bitching at his mom for food, toys, what the heck ever. Mum was the shhhh honey, no no honey, shhh sweetheart type. Finally the mom had to get up to use the restroom. The kid starts wailing. The guy next to me leaned up over his seat, turned around, and said hey, kid, shut the frick up. The whole plane didn't clap but we enjoyed 5 minutes of dead silence till mom came back. Like you said, not too epic but one of the more satisfying ones. This one was told to me by my parents since I was too young to remember at the time. The neighborhood bus stop for the Catholic high school was on the corner where our house sits. Sometimes when it was raining the kids would wait right next to our house for cover. That didn't bother my parents. They had kids, they didn't want somebody else's kids standing out in the rain. What did bother them was when they realized the kids started passing the time by ripping up all the flowers around the house. Parents called the school to complain and had a nice chat with the principal. That Saturday all the kids who used that stop showed up to replant the flowers, which they or their parents paid for. When the flowers were replanted they got to spend a few more hours helping with our other yard work. 
Then the school moved their bus stop to the main road on the edge of the neighborhood. That meant about two more blocks of walking every day for most of them and waiting in a field with no shelter from bad weather. Props to the school for really cracking down on that. Was at a family event for my girlfriend of the time. One of her cousin's kids was just running around making a ruckus in spite of the numerous times his parents told him to settle down. Eventually he took an interest in the motion activated Glade air freshener on a counter. It had been turned off because it would be spraying non-stop with all the people around. So this little 6 year old crap is standing on his tiptoes ignoring the constant warnings of don't touch that, please and re-itching over pushing buttons and eventually it happens. He flips the switch to on and 3 seconds later gets a direct blast of Glade to the face. I worked at Taco Bell in HS. At the time, we had kids meals. This kid comes in with his parents and orders a kids meal. Apparently, he had been in recently, and already had that toy. He started screaming at me to get him another toy. His dad looked at me with an absolutely dejected look on his face and begged me to go get the toy. I dug through the new box of toys, and found one. The kid ripped it out of my hands, and ran outside, directly into a rose bush. My co-worker was legit laying on the ground laughing. That kid sounds like a little prick. I was at the park with my brother's wife and their daughter, my niece, and oversaw this exchange. A young kid, probably around 5-7 was being obnoxious. Every 15 minutes or so, his grandparents, I assume, would gather his toys and bring him over to their bench and put him in timeout for a few minutes. He threw tantrums, but they would completely ignore him when he screamed and calmly ask him if he was finished. Timeout didn't start until he stopped crying. He would go back to playing, then get all wound up, and end up in timeout again. This happened 3 or 4 times in the hour-ish we were at the park. Finally, he made a little girl cry by taunting her that she didn't have a certain toy and he did. I think it was a minicraft thing. The grandparents calmly walked over, took the toy from him, gave it to the little girl, and they left the park. The boy lost his absolute crap the whole time they were leaving. Grandparents who will never end up disgusting are just normal. Boy Scout camp out in Utah when Boy Scouts were pretty much run by the Mormon church. A porcupine walked through our camp and this spoiled rich kid got a stick and chased it up a tree. We all told him to stop. He wouldn't listen. Scout leaders were off doing god knows what at the time. So this porcupine is up the tree and now the spoiled weenie wants to shoot hard candy out with his wrist rocket. He can't get a clear shot so he climbs up the tree and sits on a branch under the porcupine. Shoots hard candy at the porcupine and hits it. Hard. It was right then that he learned that when a treed porcupine feels threatened, it just lets go and lets the quills break the fall. The big bud porcupine fell right onto the spoiled kid's shoulder, bounced off, hit his thigh and then landed on the ground. It waddled away and we just laughed at the now howling spoiled kid. One of the scout leaders had to drive the kid to an emergency room. I hope he caught heck for not supervising too. Till porcupines can climb trees. Didn't witness it personally, but I went to high school in a super affluent area and a few years after I graduated a bunch of kids got busted because a kid paid his tutor for a flash drive with key swiping code, stole several teachers passwords, and changed his and his friends grades in the system. They made the argument in their defense that it wasn't their fault because they were so wealthy and used to being handed things that they didn't know how to work for them the floons and whatnot. Got expelled, made national news for being arrogant douchebags, and all the other districts in the area argued over who would take them, because nobody wanted to. Few years later my alma mater made national news again when a prom draft ring was exposed, where guys would get together and have a fantasy football style draft over who got to take whom to prom. It was exposed after a girl complained to administration that she didn't want to go with a guy who picked her in the draft. And the guy threw a hissy fit because apparently he paid off a bunch of people to get first pick and thus felt he owned her on prom night. Everyone in the draft was suspended and or banned from prom. If I remember correctly, arrogant rich kids are the worst. I was about 15. I was in the woods with some friends. Local public nature reserve. Playing on a rope swing. Drinking energy drinks and eating snacks. Chatting. Just having a good time keeping to ourselves really. The rope swing itself was on a very tall tree, hanging over what I can only explain as a miniature valley, two small hills, 
A gap in the middle. Rope swing on one side but will reach the other side. Then some kids came along on their bikes. Maybe between 10-12. Dressed up in tracksuits and quite mouthy. You know the type. They told us to move along from their rope swing. It wasn't theirs. I set that thing up myself because I was like a Spider-Man kid back then. I could climb anything. Obviously we said no. But we did say we'll leave them to it for a bit if they want to have a go there's no reason we can't all enjoy it. They wouldn't take that answer. So we carried on playing on the rope swing. But then they begun throwing sticks and rocks at us. Didn't phase us. Next thing one of them tries to show off. And speeds down the hill on his bike to try and grab me while I swing. But his mate throws a stick at the same time and it lodges in his wheel and sends him flying down the hill. To add insult to injury he flies right in my swing path and gets two knees to the ribs. Completely took the wind out of him. And so they all left feeling defeated. It feels good because we did nothing out of order. The cards just worked in our favor. Not the greatest, but it felt amazing in the moment. We moved into a newly built neighborhood when I was 10, so everyone that I had just moved in within about a year. There were a handful of us that were the same age, so we were all trying to make friends with each other at the same time. All of us were on the low end of middle class except for one kid, who was the youngest in his family and his dad had just gotten a 7 figure dismemberment settlement from an accident. He got whatever he wanted from that point forward. He would flex on us, even though none of us called it that, whenever he could and ended up being one of the worst bullies I had growing up. But one time when we were 11, Attack of the Clonus was about to come out and we were all hyped about buying toy lightsabers and fighting with them. Four or five of us were playing in my house's unfinished basement, and spoiled kid kept bragging about his more expensive lightsaber and how it would destroy ours in a fight, while sitting on the side and not actually fighting anyone. We all got sick of it and called him out on it, and he came in to fight me and my $9 key gone saber. 10 seconds in, I accidentally hit his fingers, which happened constantly in these fights, and he immediately started screaming and crying. The rest of us got silent, shocked at how much he was overreacting. He threw his saber across the room and ran out of the house. He kept being a garbage pile until we both graduated and moved away, but for a long while. No one would let him forget what a whiny baby he was at lightsaber fighting. How about that kid who tried to get off from killing 4 people in a drunk driving accident by claiming he suffered from affluenza, being too rich to know right from wrong. He was caught after fleeing to Mexico and ended up serving just 2 years in prison. Ethan Couch, he was released this year and back on probation again. His mom I think is in jail again because she broke the terms of her house arrest that she was on because she helped him escape to Mexico when he broke his probation the first time. I grew up in the ghetto, so parents usually stayed inside, neglected kids, and told them to play in the streets. So one day I'm outside playing with my friend I'm around 10 at the time she's 7, and an actual 3 year old starts calling us B. Fucktards, just everything you can imagine. The kid ends up heckin' biting me so I go over and tell his dad. Dad calls me a bee. Great. Sometime the same week another kid is harassing us. Calling us poor and ugly and once again. B. So about fed up with this crap. He's sitting over a rain drain so I grab his pear day bar that he had apparently saved up all his money for. He's like 6. And throw it down the drain. He starts screaming and wailing I'm gonna tell mama. My mama's gonna beat your butt. I sit around while he tells his mum a few houses down. He comes back all righteous and tells me mama wants to talk to you. Frick. So I go over to his house and his mum says what did he do to you? I heard his side. I want yours. The kid's smile immediately drops. I tell her about the harassment and she smiles the sweetest little smile before beating his butt right in front of me. Justice from the ghetto everyone. Thanks kids mama. Frick your responsible ghetto moms. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.